So Ineos signed another youngster straight from juniors, Michael Storm, and I thought it's, or Theodore Storm, so it's time to go through, is this actually a good strategy or is it a bad strategy? We're going to go through every single rider who signed World Tour, men's side, because women's side is just completely different because they're out of under 23s, um, or really. So does it actually work? First of all, Remco, obviously it worked outrageous. We're not even going to spend time with him. He was the guy who kicked it all off, and yeah, obviously it's worked. Carlos Rodriguez, uh, one of Ineos' first ones he, they did them with. Again, I'd say worked. First season in 2020 wasn't unreal, but wasn't terrible. 2021, already getting really good results. Um, like fourth in uh, Andalusia GC in 2021, which was his second year pro. So yeah, that's he's definitely there. He's had solid progression, so you can't deny Carlos Rodriguez was a good, a good signing. Quinn Simmons, I'd say no good. Um, his results, if we look on the left, they're not terrible, but I really don't think that he has gone as well as I thought people would. His juniors is bananas. He just won everything. Uh, and I don't think he's lived up to that. Is that because he went straight to pros? Not necessarily, but I don't think it would have necessarily helped. Uh, I think he probably could have spent some time in the under 23s. Maybe it may, might have helped him. I don't know. But I wouldn't say it's a signing that is great uh, to sign straight from juniors, which is odd because generally bigger, more powerful riders, it makes sense. You see less climbers getting signed straight from under 23s necessarily. Um, Marco Brenner, not good. Uh, again, fifth in a welter stage, oh, he's all right. But like he apparently has mad numbers. Like I've heard like Ulrich level numbers, uh, I was getting told that. And so I think he uh is someone who i don't think has done well uh with this whole signing straight to from juniors i don't know why he did he should have just gone through the 23s and probably would have turned out better uh again like the results aren't bad but i don't think they show as much promise as that his t talent does and i think these guys i don't know if it turning pro makes them worse or maybe they're just going to take longer to develop but it just seems like I don't really get the point of like, I know they can do it of like mincing around, but surely it's better to learn to win. That'll be my personal opinion. But anyway, Marco Brenner, I don't think has been a mad success. Kian um, well, you could say a good success, but you could say a bad success. He turned pro, obviously did well uh, this year um, as well as last year. Uh, however, he's now left Bora and gone straight to Yumbo. So is that a success? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, obviously you have to say this is a success. Like he did well straight out of juniors in terms of 23s. Big talent. Sorry, uh, uh, yeah, missed out on the 23s. So I'd say big talent. So yeah, it's worked. Uh, next, sorry, I forgot his name, Josh Tarling. Again, another successful, well, another Ineos guy. Another successful one. Really, really strong. Um, just time trialers. Most of his results come from time trialing. You know, he got 10, 24th on Jebel uh, feet, which is pretty impressive. So he is actually just really strong. And I think he's one of those guys where it's like, you know, he lives in the UK, he's probably raced in Belgium a lot, he knows how to race a bike, it's just learning how to do the pro races, so I think for him it makes sense to move up, well, I think other people who maybe haven't raced as much uh, in, like, as European conditions, maybe for North, North Americans it makes more sense to do in the 23s, but with Josh Tarling, it's like, obviously he should just do what they did, and um, keep him keep him going uh, in the pros, obviously any of us have no choice. Uh, next up, Michael Leonard, I don't think he should have turned pro straight away, uh, his results this year, the ninth in Copy Barsley is actually a mad result. It was a TT last day, Cop Barsley, mad hard stage race. He whacked that out. Tenth world champs under 23 ITT, which I think is a pretty shot and bad result, to be honest, because you've got all the Ineos set up against other under 23s. I don't think, I don't know why he turned pro, like it's Ineos stockpiling for talent. Um, if I was Ineos, I would have signed him and said, look, we've got you for five years. You're going to go ride for, um any under-23 development team, uh, maybe maybe Axel Merckx is one, uh, Axel Hackers Bermans or someone, and just say, look, we're going to park you there for two years, uh, m minimum. Uh, if you're better than that, come back, but otherwise, just be there for two years. You'll get paid, like, you're getting paid 100k a year or whatever, um, like you would at Ineos, and just do that. I don't know why they don't do that, but I guess they don't have many brain cells there. I don't really understand it, but yeah, he shouldn't have turned pro. He hasn't done much. Maybe next year he will. But to me, it, it seemed an odd decision. Now, this guy, I reckon you'd never heard of him. I didn't know he had existed um, until I, start, I, I started compiling. Well, I found someone else who compiled this list. Louis Joe Luz for Bora. Again, I just don't understand. Like, he's not bad. 13th in Classic Almeria. You're like, fair enough. 
but he's been pro for two years. And I just never heard of him. Um, and yeah, so I don't, I don't really think you can say this is success, success at all. Like, his results in its own, 10th in Sibiu Tour. But you can do Sibiu Tour when you're on a Devo Connie team. Like, you don't need to be on a World Tour team to do Sibiu. Like, if that's the thing I don't get, is like, they're on these big teams, and then they just do, like, point twos, po- sorry, point ones that you can do when you're a Conti team. You're like, what is the point? So, yeah, this guy, not a success at all. I would say, yeah, not the one. Uh, and ultimately, I think it comes down to the fact on these, is, like, just how much of a generational talent are they? Remco is obviously, like, the generational talent. Like, he is one of the best riders ever in the world. So, obviously, him going straight to uh, pros is fine. Tarling, I reckon, is also one of the... He's not as good as Remco, obviously, but he will be, like, a really good cyclist, right? Like, he will be a top professional, so it makes sense. But I think for other people, it's like, okay, yeah, they are good juniors, but most people who turn World Tour are good juniors. So, it's like, unless they're actually phenomenally better than everyone else, I don't see the point. I think it makes way more sense to just teach them how to win early doors, get them on the 23s, crack them out, and then take them to the pros when they're ready to actually start winning. Um, and I know this is kind of odd because I think back in the day, people didn't really win straight in the pros. So maybe the judgment now I'm having is too harsh, but I just don't really see any point um, of it. But then the other argument is obviously like, if they can get around world tour races, why not just get them into those races? This is Quinn Simmons' argument. Why would I do under 23 Paru Bay and learn how to do that when I can just do Paru Bay and learn how to do that? And it, it, that is a compelling argument. But then I think if there's no development. It doesn't make sense. And also maybe the other thing is just mentally like coming from winning every week in juniors to getting your head kicked in for like three years in a row. It's got to be tough mentally. You're just like hacking away. Like I'm just not getting any better or I'm getting better very slowly. Well, in under 23s, it's like, yeah, head kicked in maybe for a year and then you're like oh no actually like I, I, you gain a lot of physical fitness and then you're just like i'm better than everyone else so i don't really know but judging from this list most of them are, are good there's only a couple that are bad i think what's interesting is that Ineos are really committing to the signing juniors uh, as they've done another one um and obviously on this list again you see most most of the teams have done it Ineos and bora seem to be the kind of bigger ones maybe but yeah anyway cheers for watching hope you enjoy this video i'll see you in the next one